Bruchim Aboyim. Um, we are again in our series on gematrias and words of the Hebrew uh, language. And we are up to uh, the letter Vav. Vav is the sixth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It has a numerical value of six. Uh, there are those who call the letter Vav an elongated Yud. As I mentioned in last week's lecture, God created the world above with a Yud. And a vav is shaped like a hook connecting heaven and earth. The physical world was completed in six days, and a complete contained object consists of six dimensions up, down, right, left, back, and front, much like a box. In fact, when we shake a lul of an estrig, we also shake it in um, six directions. There are different customs. The uh, Lubavitch custom is to shake it to the south and then the north, then the east, up, down, and back. Again, uh, signifying all the four directions of the compass, and uh, up and down, again, for blessings to all dimensions of the world. And based, again, on the Maharal of Prague. There are six letters in the first word of the Torah, the word Bereshit. And the word Bereshit can be broken up into two words. Bara Shes, that the world was created in six days. There are six Alephs in the first verse of the Torah, and the world can exist for only 6,000 years. Again, it's broken up in the first 2,000 years of emptiness and void where there was no Torah. Again, the flood was brought into the world, 2,000 years of Torah when the Jews received the Torah on Mount Sinai, and then 2,000 years in which we're in is the Messianic dimension. And again, 6,000 years. There are six orders of Mishnah, the first of the oral tradition. There are six points to a Mugan David, a Jewish star. The Vav is a single, <coughs> excuse me, erect line symbolizing the upright stature of man standing on earth with his head reaching towards the heavens. The letter Vav is referred to as the Vav HaChibor, which means the Vav of connection. We find that the first Vav of the Torah, we find it in the first verse of Bereshit. This Vav, which appears at the beginning of the sixth word of the Torah, is the 22nd letter of the verse, the S. It alludes to the power to connect and inter interrelate all 22 individual powers of creation. The 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, from Aleph to Tav, from A to Z, so to speak. In Biblical Hebrew, the letter Vav also possesses the function of inverting the apparent tense of a verb to its opposite, from past to future, or from future to past. It's called Vav HaHippuch, the Vav that changes it. First example of this type of Vav in the Torah is the letter Vav, which begins the 22nd word of the account of creation. And it says, and God said, again, the uh, Vav for the and, in the divine service of a Jew, the power to draw from the future into the past is the secret of what we call tshuva me'ava, repentance from love. Through tshuva, through repentance from fear, tshuva me'ira, one's deliberate sins become diminished much like, become like errors, diminished in its severity, but not removed, still there. However, it's an amazing phenomenon. When a Jew returns in love and does tshuva, repents, his deliberate sins become like actual merits. They actually become mitzvot. The famous story of uh, Rabbi Yisrael Bardichev, who uh, he would see this man who was a gambler and a lowlife, and he would say to the man how he, how he envied him, because when the time would come for him to do tshuva, that all of his sins would become mitzvahs. And he would jokingly, every time he'd see him, he would say, did you repent yet? Did you repent yet? And finally, on his deathbed, uh, he, he saw him, and uh, his wife asked uh, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak if he had done true tshuva, and he said yes. So again, if a person sins a great deal with, with an act going against God, there's still a silver lining that God applies to us by allowing us to repent and taking those negative actions and making them actually mitzvahs positive. 
Now the vav links words to form sentences. It joins sentences into paragraphs and chapters. It connects one chapter to another and even unifies books. The absence of a vav at the beginning of a new chapter in the Torah indicates the beginning of a new era or subject. The first four books of the Torah are connected with a vav. The book of uh, Shemot, the second book, the Eilish Shemots, and these are the names, connecting the first book to the second. Second to the third, Vayikra. Vayikra, again, Avav El Moshe, and God called to Moses. Then the fourth book, third to the fourth, Vayadavar Hashem El Moshe, and God spoke to Moshe. So the first four books are connected with the Vav, one next to the other, making them all one whole. But not the fifth, the book of Devarim. A rabbi in the Devarim, it says, Eila HaDevarim, no Vav, just Eila, these are the words. Our rabbis tell us that the first four books together form what we call the written Torah, which were dictated to Moshe directly from God, much like a stenographer. So even though Moshe was the one writing it, all this down, he still used phrases such as, and God spoke to Moshe saying. The fifth book begins the oral Torah, the oral tradition with Moshe writing, and God spoke to me saying, imposing some of his own words and feeling into the narrative. In many words, the presence of, or absence of a vav has no effect on the pronunciation, but biblical exegesis often finds a special meaning implied by the vav's presence or absence. This is referred to as the term of male, which may, means complete, if the vav is there, or chaser, deficient, if it is missing a vav. Again, it does not change how the word is pronounced. An example of this would be the name Yaakov, for Jacob our father, that is written male vav, with an extra vav added five times in the Torah. And at the same time, the name Eliyahu, of Elijah the prophet, which is written five times chaser vav, missing a vav. So Rashi tells us in Leviticus 24-22 that Yaakov took the vav from Eliyahu's name five times and added it to his own as collateral that the prophet would fulfill his mission of heralding in the Israel's redemption. We know that the one that will introduce Mashiach, Messiah, into the world is Elijah the prophet. So again, he took it as collateral. We also see that male and chaser vav, whether it's added or missing, can change the meaning of a word. This is one reason why the Torah is written without vowels, so that we can learn different lessons from the same word. As our rabbis teach us that there are 70 facets to the Torah, interpretations to the Torah. When, children, when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, when they left Egypt, the Torah writes, the sea was split like a choma, which is wall, on their left and on their right. Now the word choma is written both male and chaser, with a vav and without a vav. With a vav, the word means wall. But without a vav, the word can be read chama. There are no vowels. Anger. From this reading, our rabbis tell us that the sea was angry with the Jewish nation since they entered the sea with an idol called Pesel Micha. And it wanted to drown not just the Egyptians, but also the children of Israel. The sea said to God, these are idol worshippers and these are idol worshippers. What's the difference? We also see that the same gematria, numerical values, can be seen as positive and negative. We've shown how the number six has so many positive meanings, and yet the gematria of the word sheker, shin kuf reish, falsehood, has a numerical value of 600. In counting gematrias, we can drop zeros. So 600 becomes six. The word for truth, emet, aleph mem tof, has a gematria of 441. Four, four, and one is nine. So nine stands for truth, six stands for falsehood. In English numbers, six and nine look identical. The side of evil tells a person that the six Sheker, falsehood, is really a nine, truth. It just fell over. A lesson to be learned that many times the difference between good and evil is not easy to recognize. The Jewish nation is also complete, self-contained, and unique, which is why the number six is so prominent in its growth to become a nation. 
When the Jews left Egypt, they were numbered at 600,000 men between the ages of 40 to 60, corresponding to the 600,000 letters in the Torah, based on the morale of Prague. In Egypt, the Jewish women miraculously were given birth to six tuplisks in the Gemara and Brachus. And when Yeser, Moshe Rabbeinu's father-in-law, became Jewish, the letter Vav was added to his name. And from then on he was called Yisro, again, for adding another letter to the Torah. In fact, actually not another portion, the whole Sedra, based on the Mizrahi. In the Torah's account of creation, it uses the phrase for describing the sixth day of creation using the definite article He, Yom Hashishi, the sixth day, which was a hint of the existence of a very special sixth day, which was the sixth of Sivan, which is Shvuot, when the Torah was given to the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. On that day, the future of the universe hung in the balance. Had the Jewish nation not accepted the Torah, the whole world would have reverted back to tohu vavohu, emptiness and void as it was in the beginning of creation. Now the full physical expression of the natural world is reflected in the number six. It is the epitome of what we call gashmius, corporeality, and the symbol of shlemus, completion within the material world. It is also connected to our spiritual existence, our greatest expression of adherence and dedication to God Almighty is in the words of the Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, which has six words. And the succeeding line, Baruch Shem, blessed is his, the name of his kingdom forever, again, has another six words. In the tabernacle, the Mishkan, God's dwelling place on earth, the microcosm of all worlds, the hooks used to connect the pillars to the curtains were called vave hoamudim. The hooks, vave, plural, of the pillars. This phrase is actually repeated six times in the account of the tabernacle. Twice in the portion of Truma and four times in the portion of Ayakel. In each portion, in each portion, the word vave is the sixth word of the verse in which it appears. It's an accident. When Moshe came down from the mountain, he brought with him the two tablets of stone, Shnei Luchot Avanim. Each tablet measured, measured six handbreadths in each direction. The true existence of a Jew is not the written Torah, which has been adopted by both Christianity and Islam. What makes us uniquely Jewish is the six orders of the oral Torah, which makes us, again, unique. This gives us our connection to God, again, through the letter Vav. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. May God bless you all. Have a good Shabbos and be well.